Good morning and welcome to Marcus Today. I'm your host Mbitha Mwema. Co-hosting this show with me is Mr. George Bodo. George, how are you? Not bad. What's going on today? Lots of things going on be there. Yes. Um, power production plants slashed. This is not good news for PPS, power purchase, existing power purchase okay. regular and, and additional projects that are seeking to join the, the grid line. Okay. It looks like there's a lot happening there, so maybe there's a question of whether the development expenditure is justified and we're beginning to see the negative impact or rather the adverse impact when it comes to power. No, I think the issue with power is that, you see, when you do a power project, it's, it, there has to be an off-take and usually there's only one off-taker in the power business, that is none other than Kenya Power. That's true. Yes. But then now, again, if they're slashing it 30%, they're only saying that the growth is going 7%, which means they overestimated it prior to them even starting out on the capital expenditure. But I think it's also a function of economic activities. Is it? Do you have, um, is there, it, I think for me, power, power, power consumption for me is, a, is an indicator of economic, the level of economic activities. That's when you're very slashing true. off tech, it shows that, in my view, that there is some stagnation in the economic activities because ideally, Production is supposed to be off. The uptake is supposed to be uh, close to ninety percent. If That's you're having, true. you're having projections, you bring down your projection off tech, then the economy so is really, the, is the economy really doing well. That's the point. Yes. That's very true. So then, if I hear what you're saying, we are probably <coughs> overestimating the uptake and the economic output of this country, that, which, yes. which in a way could actually be pointing to an element of a need for a review of the vision 2030 because then how do you begin to justify the deficit that we have today and a large chunk i mean a good chunk of that is actually allocated to development expenditure yeah that's maybe something worth considering but also saying you, what you're also saying is that what happened to the last mile connectivity that's true because what we're saying is that it, today kenya on grid performance is about 80 percent uh two, 15 years ago we were about 40%. Okay, so we've doubled in that capacity. We've doubled uh, we've on grid performance. Okay. But then it could, you could be right that we could actually be overestimating. We could be overestimating some of consumption. this. Consumption. All right. Let's switch gears a little bit. Today we're seeing that uh, the governor of the central bank came out yesterday defending the slight weakness in the currency. And yeah. he said he tends to allude to the fact that the demonetization and the, the process that they're getting into in terms of people returning the old 1,000 and getting the, other, the new 1,000 shilling is potentially creating that volatility that we've been seeing in the markets. It's also interesting because we had this extensive conversation yesterday in our morning show. Do you actually agree with what the governor is saying? I think it's all transitory. Everything for me is transitory. Um, I'm not worried. Um, and I don't know how much of the monetization chaos uh, that is feeding into the FX market. My, my sense is that, my sixth sense is that it could actually be not contributing to the chaos in the FX it market right be. now. So the thing is, my, it's potentially still, more I'm fundamental still sticking, than technical. Yes, I'm still st st sticking to my view that Actually, foreign portfolio outflows from the stock market is what is driving, that, is what is driving the weakness. It. Yes, and then finally, and supplementary budget. Yes, what's happening there? Yes, so um, Treasury presented a supplementary budget to Parliament on Wednesday, and the the thrust of the, the supplementary budget is to actually release about sixty five billion shillings towards counties to clear pending bills. We have what uh, we have about less than ten days to. The end year. of the fiscal, the fiscal year. year closing. So is that rush? Okay. Well, it tells you something about fiscal planning in Kenya. How can you actually be ten days to the end of the fiscal year? What that's when you're rushing. The last months that's when you're rushing payments. to clear pending bills. I hope you don't have and any by the way, payments. That's sixty five billion shillings is about sixty percent of the outstanding so you have about forty percent that is going that's to roll still, over. That's going to roll over to the next year. Yet consumption hasn't stopped. The government is still expending. It's a bit of an unfair situation. The, the fiscal accounting in Kenya should move towards accrual. This cash accounting thing is no It's working not working for yes. us. All right, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are taking a deep dive into the FI market. By FI, I mean fixed income market. To help us have this discussion, we are hosting Barry Omolo, who's from Standard Investment Bank. He's a fixed income dealer. For your benefit, yesterday the fixed income market was up 16% in terms of turnover. We saw 5.7 billion trade hands over the trading day. The bulk of the activity was in the IFBs, that's infrastructure bond, and we saw the locals selling out to the foreign investors. For this and more, don't go anywhere. We'll be having this discussion after the break. Take a look at the market highlights and see you shortly.